What are acids? The word acid comes from a Latin word which is acer that means sour. For example, I take lemon juice. So this is the lemon juice I have uh, in the beaker and this lemon juice is acidic. Now, what is the acid here? We say this is the citric acid. Similarly, you have lactic acid in milk. Even in animals, there is formic acid. You might have witnessed an ant bite or an insect bite sometime and then you have certain kind of swelling on the skin. Why does that happen? That is because of the acid released by the insect on your hand and this is the formic acid. Now, in order to neutralize any acid which occurs, what is the right strategy? The right strategy is to use a base. Once acid and base combine, what would happen? A salt would be formed along with water and this is what is the process of neutralization. So whenever there is an acid, if this acid reacts with a base, you get salt and water. Commonly in layman's term, you might have heard if there is an insect bite, apply some toothpaste probably that would relieve the swelling and the pain and that is why we say acid is being neutralized by the base here. So common examples of acid is citrus fruits, vinegars, anything which is sore would be a good example to say that this is acid. Now acids are corrosive. There can be serious burns by acid if not properly handled. Even in laboratories, we use dilute acid. So if you are using HCl in laboratory, you might have heard 3% HCl solution. That means it is diluted to only 3%. Also, if you visit a chemistry lab, you would see most of the acids in the shelf are stored in glass bottles. Why is it so? Because acids are corrosive. Since they are corrosive, they have a tendency to corrode and therefore they cannot be stored in plastic containers. The only non-reactive good container we can say here would be glass and therefore acids are stored in glass bottles. Now, acid reacts with certain metals and carbonates in different fashion. So we'll understand each of the examples. The first example is when an acid reacts with metal. Now when an acid reacts with metal, I take an example of zinc, you can take an example of aluminum or any other metal. What would happen? The metal chloride would be formed. So when zinc reacts with hydrogen chloride, zinc chloride and hydrogen gas is released. And this is where mat metal reacts with acid. There is formation of metal chloride. Clear? The next important reaction that we understand is metal reacts with carbonates. Now, what is the carbonate we are using here? Calcium carbonate, CaCO3. So, uh, acid, sorry, not metal. Acid reacts with carbonate. And when acid reacts with carbonate, what is formed? Salts are formed. So, CaCl2 and water and uh, carbon dioxide are released. The next is acid when reacts with base, as I already said. So what would be the formation? The formation is salts and this is the, uh, in the case of sodium hydroxide reacting with hydrogen chloride, HCl, you have formation of common salt in HCl. Let's talk about another good example. You might have seen sometimes utensils have uh, kind of deposits within the surface and uh, even the gas burners have deposits towards the side. And what is used? Acids are used for the purpose of descaling. We call this as a process of descaling. So whatever salts are deposited, those salts are removed with the help of acid. And this process is known as descaling. Usually acid along with the hot water is used to uh, descale. Even we say that acids can be classified into three various categories. One is the organic acid and the inorganic acid. 
The next is strong and weak and concentrated and diluted. So organic acids are those acids which are found naturally. They can be from plant. They can be from animal. I talked to you, uh, talk to you about uh, let's say formic acid from animals, insect bite um, and bite. Plant we have tartaric acid. Uh, this is from tamarind. Similarly, acids can be strong and weak. Strong acids. HCl, hydrogen chloride, nitric acid, sulfuric acid, all of these are strong acids, even responsible for phenomena like acid rain. On the other hand, if the same acids, uh, we can say uh, the same, uh, the same acids, the hydrogen chloride, uh, nitric acid and sulfuric acid can be in the concentrated form. Concentrated means very less amount of water is present. However, when I say dilute, you have more amount of uh, dilution or water in which it is dissolved. So 3% HCl when I say is a diluted HCl. So these acids, strong acids are usually diluted in, avoid, in order to avoid any kind of burn or corrosion that can occur. Then we do have weak acids. Acids which are not that strong. For example, we do consume lemon and definitely lemon acid is not that strong. So we call this as a weak acid. So citric acid is a relatively weak acid. Our stomach acid which helps in the digestion is a strong acid. Similarly, there is acetic acid. Acetic acid is an, a, again a weak acid. Oxalic acid, again a weak acid. So usually we can say organic acids which are found from plants which are consumed by human beings are usually not that strong. So we have certain list of acids here. Milk and milk products definitely we know lactic acid. We also talked about lactose intolerance in other lectures. Tomatoes we have oxalic acid. Tamarind as I already mentioned is tartaric acid. Citrus fruits have citric acid so citrus and citric so lemons oranges all those which have vitamin c now uh, also those which are rich in vitamin c for example uh, amla guava have ascorbic acid even if you are consuming vitamin c supplemental tablets that is ascorbic acid so ascorbic acid usually uh, related with vitamin c intake then vinegar has acetic acid uh, apple has malic acid and then as I mentioned insect bites, insect, insect stings have formic acid. So those are some of the common acids. The top ones that we mentioned are the plant acids and the bottom one that we mentioned the formic acid classically is a animal acid. Both animal and plant acids which occur naturally are known as organic acids. So these are examples of organic acids but we do have acids which are inorganic. Now inorganic acids are those which are not available naturally. So HCl uh, which is hydrogen chloride then you have nitric acid, sulfur uh, sulfuric acid are examples of inorganic acids as well. So this is understanding the acids. Now acids can be tested through various ways. Uh, let's say I have a universal indicator here. Now this is a universal indicator strip which occurs. Now this universal indicator strip is a very unique strip. It behaves similar to a pH scale. That means in an acid solution it would turn what? It would turn red and um, towards red so orangish reddish and in a strong basic solution it would turn bluish. So this uh, I am trying to test the acid here. I have lemon juice and this universal indicator. I dip this universal indicator and as you can see a good red color can be seen indicating that this lemon juice is what? This lemon juice is acidic in nature. Now uh, we would understand base in a while but just to have an example I have choline which is the glass cleaner and with this choline I just put a spray here and as you can see this universal indicator turns blue. This universal indicator turns blue indicating that this is basic in nature. So that this is how we understand acids.